All right, today in the shop, I have a 2010cc 3.6 liter VR6 automatic with a number of various concerns, including check engine light, car runs rough, car has a hard time starting. Now this car apparently has been to a bunch of other shops, had who knows how many parts thrown at it. It's a pretty good descriptor of how things are gonna go when there's an ECM sitting in the passenger seat of the car. So I have it now, we're gonna walk through all the issues on this car and hopefully figure out what the heck is wrong with it. Now, after looking at this ECM, I don't think that they actually replaced the ECM. I think they got it in case they needed it because this one says goods, but needs programming on the back and it's got our junkyard numbers on it. So uh, we'll set this aside and hope that we don't need it. First things first, we're gonna run a complete scan on the car and check every single module in the car. While that's going on, I'm gonna do a visual inspection and see if I can see anything obviously crazy with the car. That'll point us in the right direction and also look to see if I can tell what parts may have been replaced on the car. All right, so we have our full scan done and as you can see, there's a whole bunch of faults stored <laughs> in our car. I'm not gonna focus on too much anything other than the ECM just at this point we can address any of this stuff down the road. Let's look at our engine first though. Circuit for a brake vacuum pump, open circuit. Paying attention to the freeze frame data here. Looks like cold start, that's happening. We have an intake manifold, tuning valve control circuit bank one, electrical malfunction. We have a fuel pressure regulator mechanical function, fuel pressure sensor malfunction, misfire, misfire, and misfire. Now, none of these codes are jumping out at me as like, this is a super normal 3.6 liter issue. The 3.6 liters do have an issue with timing chain wear, causing low fuel pressure. So that'll be something we look at once we get the car running. Now for the P119A malfunction here, there is a tech tip for that for checking for vacuum leaks at the intake manifold. That could definitely cause our misfires, that might point to a fuel pressure related issue for sure. And you know what? It's not gonna cause a circuit issue on either one of the other two faults, but if everybody's unhappy, it could surely make for a problem. What we also wanna look at is, are all these codes stored at the same time? Yes, 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 basically, pretty much. Well, this one's a little bit later and a definitely a lower voltage. Misfire, yes. Okay, so all these are stored pretty close together, which may or may not mean that they have some kind of influence over each other. Next, we'll go ahead and start the car up. We'll monitor our misfires on our scan tool, and we'll see what we can see. Hopefully, we'll see some kind of misfire. We'll also go ahead and look at fuel trims while, we, while we're in here. All right, so it looks like we have a dead misfire on cylinder two, but that's the only cylinder that we're seeming to have a problem with. Let's see what our fuel trim is. Our fuel trim is pulling a little bit of fuel back, but that's well within our specification. That'll be a more important reading when we get the car warmed up. This measuring value block here we're looking at is timing. This is a place we can look at how much the chain is actually worn or the tensioner is worn or something in the timing circuit is unhappy. Sometimes with those fuel pressure issues, the chain can be worn enough to cause a fuel pressure issue, but not worn enough to cause a timing issue. Typically plus or minus five in this measured value block, 93 field three is kind of what I'm looking for, but the car is also cold. So we need to really see what it is when the car is warm. Now it looks like our misfire kind of went away. So we'll probably end up Checking our spark plugs because we have a complete unknown maintenance history on this car. For all we know, it could be the wrong spark plugs in the car. Now I'm noticing my Lambda control in measured value block one field four is way pulling fuel away for bank two. This is something that we may wanna look at as well, especially when you compare bank one to bank two. What we really need to do though, is we really need to get the car up to temperature before we're hyper-focused on a lot of this stuff. We got the car up to temperature, even though all those codes were stored at a cold start temperature. I wanted to warm the car up and see what it does. I have very poor information on this car when I got it. So I wanted to see what would happen when the car warmed up. I also wanted to run the timing diagnosis where it runs a sweep of the intake cam, goes all the way to full advance, all the way back and then back to its normal position and that passed, so we're good there. But as I'm sitting there running these tests, I'm thinking, 
I don't remember this engine with this intake manifold having an intake controller flap of any kind. That's not to say it doesn't have it, but I don't remember that. I also don't recall this having a brake booster vacuum pump either. It may, but I don't recall. And this is where like trusting your gut on things at least initially makes sense. So what I did was keep in mind, we have an ECM in the car in the passenger seat. I pulled up the cowl, which was completely broken. It's in fact, I guess we can, we can go ahead and get it out of the car. Uh, and I found a junkyard ECM that it looks like it's been opened up and resealed. So what I need to do next is check and see if this is even the correct ECM for this car. See, there's a TSB for one of those faults that we have that doesn't apply to our engine. It's for a BPY, but it says that if you replace an ECM, you have to replace the corresponding fuel pressure sensor because the two are kind of tied together and maybe one of them has been updated at some point. So if we don't have the right ECM, all the data that the engine is sending to the ECM might be correct, but it's interpreted wrong. So the ECM's freaking out like, oh my gosh, I got something wrong, even though it might not actually have something wrong or even more insidious, it has something wrong, it's sending the report, and the interpretation of the report is not correct. All right, one of the beauties of somebody being in here before is that usually makes things much easier <laughs> to, uh, to get out. So here's our ECM. Now clearly, it's a junkyard ECM. It's got the sticker from the junkyard right there. It's actually got a date, 12.30 of 20. So boy, this car's probably been broken for quite some time. Our next step, we need to see if this is the right part number for the ECM. Remember I said that this one, I don't think has an intake runner and I don't know about the brake pressure sensor or the, the whatever the brake one was. Maybe this is some ECM from another car. So I'm gonna give my man Pauly D a call and uh, let's see what he's got to say. Maybe he can look up some PR codes and stuff for us. Also, there's a razor blade that is rusty behind the cowl, which means somebody was probably cutting wiring harnesses. Ugh. Oh yeah, they were. Cool story, bro. Okay, I'm waiting for Paul to call me back, and while I'm waiting, I'm actually gonna plug in this other ECM that says good but need programming. So it's probably not coded to the vehicle immobilizer system, which is a system that'll prevent the car from starting if one of the right components is not installed. So I'm gonna plug this in and just see what kind of codes we get. Maybe we have the wrong ECM and it's looking for things the car doesn't have, and maybe this one is a little bit closer. Sometimes with these VR6s, it's really tough to make sure that you have the right software and the right ECM hardware part number. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, basically, as soon as I turn the key on, you can hear the fans running on high speed, which means the ECM is absolutely not happy whatsoever. That's one of the kind of the dead giveaways that the ECM isn't happy, fans running on high speed. I'm gonna still check the faults anyway, just to see what it's got. I'm guessing we're gonna have a whole bunch of really upset modules and we'll just end up pulling it back out and seeing if maybe we do actually have the right ECM. Okay, talk about super unhappy with this other ECM. Uh, I couldn't even get the scan tool to talk to the ECM, which actually is kind of weird. Even with the wrong ECM, it should still try and communicate and it wasn't communicating at all. In fact, I got the red could not be reached warnings. Maybe a sign that we have multiple problems or maybe that despite saying it's a good ECM, ain't not no one good ECM. So uh, this is a part where I really, really, I hate this because what else are we gonna do, right? I don't wanna spend a bunch of time diagnosing the car, all to find out we have the wrong ECM in the car, but how do you test this to make sure that it is the right one other than looking up part numbers? And hopefully you can cross-reference the numbers and see if you actually do have the right part number. Say part number again, Charles. Hey, how are you? I'm doing all right, buddy. What's going on with you? So I have a 10cc that has a, a myriad of customer complaints. I am concerned that I actually might not have the right ECM in the car. Okay, um, let's do this. Why don't you shoot me the VIN number of the car that you're working on and I can pull that up. All right, uh, let me get that in. This is always gonna be a good, a good thing when one, the ECM that, that is in the car looks like it was under water. It actually looks like somebody dug it out of the mud. And then there was another one in the passenger seat. Well, usually the best thing to do is if one ECM doesn't fix it, you just put another one in it and you just keep going. 
This feels a lot like a lot like a cam sensor or an oil pressure sensor. So the ECM that should be in this one is O3H906O32F as in Frank, P as in Peter. Okay, I have a C as in Charlie um, installed in the car. Based on that number, that is for a B6 Passat. There's the older gen 36, there's this gen 36, there's front wheel drive, there's all wheel drive, there's automatic, there's DSG. I don't know, was there ever a manual? Front wheel drive, maybe. It looks like the B6 cars do have the uh, actuator for the variable runner on the B6 Passat, but on a CC, I don't show any variable intake stuff. So I believe what we have is the wrong ECM for the car. Awesome. Now, I, like I said, I had another ECM sitting in the seat. Maybe you can see if this, maybe the one that belongs in the car, the, uh, what is it, FP, maybe it supersedes to this one. Same part number, but it ends in FQ. Fun. So, fun wow. questions, fun questions. Based on what I'm looking at here, that is for an all-wheel drive car so uh, they have VIN splits which that one actually has the same VIN split coverage but mm -hmm. that one's for all-wheel drive now I would say that one's probably more likely to work because it actually is for the same engines for the BLV um, that would be in a CC as opposed to uh, the, the older Passat one which was also a BLV but different so I I plugged it in and the car got super unhappy um, like it wouldn't even talk to the ECM. It was so unhappy fans on high speed. So, I mean, the other, the other thing I'm concerned about is like, this says good, but need programming. This might not be any good of an ECM. I mean, those fans kicking on high speed is a common smoked ECM. Yes. That is what happens when you brick an ECM, uh, on, on Mark five and B six. Don't jump start your car backwards. Cause you'll smoke the ECM. Ask several salesmen that I worked with how they know. I, I mean, at this point, I don't know that I'm, I'm going to really be able to go any further with the diagnosis on this car until I get the right software in an ECM. Well, there you, get, there you have it. So we have confirmed that we don't have the right ECM in the car. We've also confirmed that the one sitting in the passenger seat, she ain't no good either. So really in a perfect world at this point, we would stop, we would get the proper ECM or at least the proper software in the car and see what happened next. However, that's a send the ECM out type deal. And I want to know a little bit more about the car before we pull the trigger on an ECM, all to find out that maybe we have a timing chain issue, a high pressure fuel pump issue, or something else going on that we're actually seeing. Now, late last night, because I couldn't sleep, I went ahead and pulled spark plugs, pulled ignition coils, pulled the upper intake manifold, and pull the valve cover. Probably not the most efficient next step, but I had a lot of questions. What I found was cylinder two actually did have a lot of moisture buildup inside the cylinder. When I pulled the intake manifold, I bore scoped down each individual cylinder and found that there's a pretty good amount of carbon buildup all across our engine. So the carbon buildup may very well likely be what's causing that misfire on cold start. Remember, the misfire went away when the car warmed up. That's a pretty common sign of carbon buildup. Because I was super close, I went ahead and popped the valve cover off just to take a look. I set the engine to our base timing and all of our timing marks lined up. 16 rollers between the timing marks on our camshaft. So base timing was good. However, there was a pretty good amount of slack at the top of the chain between the two camshafts. I also put the bore scope down and tried to see a little bit better on the high pressure fuel pump lobe. This high pressure fuel pump is driven by the timing chain on the backside of the engine. And while I don't think we really have a severe timing issue, a slight timing issue, coupled with a slight amount of wear on the lobe that drives the high pressure fuel pump could absolutely cause all of our fuel issues. I also went ahead and lifted the back seat up. Clearly somebody had been in there, made sure all of our connections were good at the low pressure fuel pump. Next, we're gonna get the car outside, get it up to temp, and I'm gonna check our fuel pressure readings. One of the great things about this engine is we can look at certain fuel pressure readings and see if we can at least get closer to confirming we do have a high pressure fuel pump failure or we have chains that aren't out of specification but are a little bit unhappy. So when I just started up the car after being completely cold, it actually started up and ran a bit better than it did the last cold start. 
I also went ahead and did the output test of the solenoid on a high pressure fuel pump to make sure it clicked. It did, which means we have power and ground and the solenoid electrically is working anyway. Also notice that it looks like somebody pierced the wire with a probe or something like that. And they had cut that wire at the ECM. I'm assuming to test the wire from the ECM to the solenoid on top of the high pressure fuel pump. So I drove it, tried to drive it as spirited as I possibly could. And for a few times it actually ran okay. The longer I drove it, the worse it started to run. So I went in and checked the adaptation of our timing as well as fuel trim. And it was really weird because initially off idle fuel trim was pulling fuel away. Then I drove it again and it actually started to add fuel back in. So our fuel trim numbers went from negative, meaning pulling fuel away, to positive, meaning adding fuel. I also readdressed our timing correction in measure value block 93 slash three. And now we're at negative 4.0 instead of 3.0. I feel like if we kept driving it, that number would probably hit five. So here's what I think is happening. I think our timing is out just a little bit not a ton and definitely not enough to cause a timing fault. I also think the lobe that drives the high pressure fuel pump is probably also worn a little bit. This car has 200,000 miles on it, or give or take, so it being worn is not really out of the question. So not only do we have an ECM issue, those faults for the brake booster pump and the intake manifold came back right away. We really do have some fueling issues. Now, is it just a high pressure pump? Is it just timing? These are things that I don't know. If we got to do timing chains, we'll probably end up doing a high pressure fuel pump anyway. But either way, uh, this car needs some serious work. And what drives me bonkers about this kind of thing is we don't have a definitive answer. Unfortunately, there isn't the boop, it's this part, go ahead and replace it. It's a culmination of all kinds of different stuff. And the car has been to a lot of shops, so there's some hackery potential as well. And some shotgunning of unknown parts, obviously the wrong ECM, when they plugged it in, it probably tripped this intake manifold fault that the car doesn't even have. Freak out, send it away, send it away, send it away. Or the customer did some shop bouncing. I don't really know the whole story. All I know is I have it. It probably needs chains. It definitely needs an ECM. And maybe now it's just time to snatch that VR6 out and put it in something a little more fun than an automatic CC. So this is one of those cases that kind of bums you out that you don't have a definitive answer. But unfortunately, that's how it goes sometimes. With that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time. Also, a complete change of scenery. Yellow cars in the shop, blue cars in the shop. We're expecting some storms tonight, so I gotta keep the girls protected, safe and sound inside the shop. The Miata will be coming in next, and don't worry, the Mark III is safely tucked away too.